All right, folks, we wanted to switch gears to have a different conversation. Um, everybody's been talking about what uh, Panthers quarterback Cam Newton has to say about a variety of things. And it came up that he talked about what the roles of women should be in relationship. It also came up where he put it. I think he put his foot in the mouth. Now we're talking about male, female relationships. <laughs> he put his foot in the mouth about women in sports. But. That's not the end or there. But y'all, if you listen to the interview, he said it was funny that women are asking him about running routes. He's like, it's funny. It's just funny a woman asking me about routes. I think that's more problematic. But we're not going to talk about that at this particular moment. I wanted to have this conversation about Cam Newton, what he said about how women should be when in a relationship with a man. I want you to take a listen to this. And then we'll have our conversation with relationship expert, LaDawn Black. Check this out. A, a perfect, a perfect example of what a man was in my life by my father. Mm -hmm. My parents have been together for 36, 37 years now. And it's, and it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in a three parent household, my mom, my father and my grandmother. And uh, I knew what a woman was, not a bad bitch. Mm -hmm. OK, what's the difference? A woman. Okay. A bad bitch is a person who's just, you know, girl, I'm a bad bitch. You know, I'm doing yeah. this. I'm doing that. I, 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 I look the part, but I don't act the part. Okay. You know, and it's a lot of women who are bad bitches. And I say bitches in, in, in a way not to degrade a woman, but just to, to, to go off the aesthetic of what they deem is a boss chick. Mm -hmm. Now, a woman for me is handling your own, but knowing how to cater to a man's needs, mm -hmm. right? And I think a lot of times when you get that aesthetic of like, I'm a boss bitch, like I'm a this, I'm a dad, no baby, like, but you can't cook. Okay. You don't know, you don't know when to be quiet. You mm -hmm. don't know how to allow a man to lead. And that got Cam into some hot water. So I didn't want to talk about this just amongst myself and my culture crew. I wanted to bring in an expert. <laughs> so we brought it back, Miss LaDawn Black, um, who's going to give us uh, some insight onto this. And we're also joined again by Bakari Jones. LaDawn, thank you so much for checking in with us. How are you this afternoon? I am wonderful. And I want to talk about this. You know I want to talk about this. So much. There's so much, so much there. So much good stuff. All right, so Cam, he made a differentiation between a bad B. I don't like to use the word, so I'm going to just say a bad B. Mm -hmm. And then he says a woman. So that's the first thing. And then second thing is, like, a woman knows how to do certain things. She has a certain, I'm going to say certain set of skills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, look, now, look, now let me tell you, it's now... <laughs> Because people put them out on social media. They were like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, Cam needs to get the, the hell out. Cam needs, and I'm like, okay, how, when we hear people say things, and I don't want to take this man's view out of context, what is the proper view of what you're here, of what, of what he's saying? What, what's the context that we should take this in, LaDon? You know what? I have no problem with what Cam said. He has a right to feel that way. If that's the way he views the women that are in his life and those are his expectations, that's fine. And I think people would not have gotten upset if he had said, look, you know, this is what I want for myself. I want a woman who's like my mom, a woman who's like my grandmother, who cooks, who's traditional, who listens to her man. I don't think it would have caught fire the way it did. But for him to bring that to all relationship situations, I think that's where he got in trouble. So you can't apply that that criteria to all relationships? Absolutely not. I mean, it's like me meeting a man and saying, you got to build me a house because isn't that what men do? Aren't men handy? Build me a house. Don't buy me one. Build me one. And, you know, and I'm talking to a dude who's an accountant who's like, I don't even know how to use a hammer, but I, I can take care of you and take care of your kids and be good. You know, so it's it's ridiculous. I think we need to get to a point, especially when we have these platforms and, you know, he's a he's a superstar. He has a huge platform. I think sometimes we need to really sort of drill it down to this is what works for me. 
this is what I feel may work for other people, but truly this is what I desire. And I think if he had wrapped it in that framework, people wouldn't have run with it the way they did. Yeah, because he kind of said it like definitively, mm -hmm. this is what a woman is. Now, right. the fact of that he's saying, LaDon, that a woman should know when to stay quiet. <laughs> and I, I... <laughs> Kari... Look, look, your heart hurt for him because you knew it was coming. I, and look, and look, look done. the moment that man said, because he doesn't have, it's hard, you know, I think only certain men can say certain things because we, you know, you look at the whole package, right? If mm -hmm. a man or a woman says something about what a, uh, you know, if a man says what a woman should be doing, the first mm -hmm. thing people are going to do is cast judgment and be like, wait a minute, hold on, who made that? Who are you? Mm hmm but it, and I think the same thing for 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 women says what a man should be doing. So should we not have a conversation about roles? And it, 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 if not, because I know roles can differ from relationship to relationship. My wife and I we talk about this all the mm -hmm. time. You know, when you look at let's let's go for the number one target in the black community, Will and Jada, <laughs> yeah. right? And their roles in relationship, Ricard. You know, I had to bring them up, Ricard. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know. When we look at those roles, like we really don't, and, and I'm saying in our community, we have, I don't think we respect the fact that people's relationships are what they want them to be according to the people that's involved in that relationship, that they determine the parameters, they determine how the, the, the dynamics of that relationship. And I think that's very true. I mean, the thing is, we're all raised with traditional roles. You know, even if you didn't have a mom and a dad in your home, you got it at school, you got it at church, you got it from a movie, a TV show, you know, you understood that a man is, you know, traditionally supposed to be a provider. A woman is supposed to be the one who maintains the home. You know, it, it's advanced in the 21st century where she has to maintain the home and maintain a career and be educated on top of that. Yeah. And so there are traditional roles. My car breaks down. I'm supposed to call my dad. I'm not supposed to call necessarily my mom. You know, somebody messes with me in the street. I'm supposed to call my dad. You know, so you have those roles. We're all raised with them. But anyone who's been in any relationship, I'm not going to even say that you have to be married or be in a long term relationship. You realize that sometimes those roles get a little gray. You know, if he's a better cook than I am, then he's the one who cooks. If he's a better cleaner than I am. He's the one who cleans. If I happen to make more money, then I'm the one who pays the bulk of the bills. And I think that we need to get to a point where we see that those types of relationships can be successful as well. Yeah. And the thing is, Cam has to be real careful talking about traditional roles because easily, you know, anyone can come out and say, well, traditionally, you're supposed to be married to the mother of your children. He's he's not. So, right. I mean, so he's violating a traditional role. So right. there's a lot of things out there that can be considered. And and then you know, Bakari. First, I want to make sure that you, you 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 join this conversation as well because I think the other part of it is is that we are also in in a space and in a time, Ladon, where relationships don't just include a man and a woman. There are mm -hmm. same sex relationships. There are relationships. I mean, people are having all different types of relationships nowadays. So it's very. It, I, I see why some people were offended that he has this hard, fast rules, not understanding that relationships have evolved over time and that, that people are in very different places and understandings about relationships. He also has to understand that he's a man with means. So women are going to approach him in a different way. A woman may be more willing to be submissive or to be quiet or to not make major decisions because he's the man with the money. He's the man with the fame. And so I think in any situation where we're giving advice or giving our thoughts, we also have to sort of look at what makes us different from a typical person. And he has means. He has celebrity. So a woman who's interested in him may roll herself back a little bit just to be part of that lifestyle. He needs to consider that. And I think that was that was that was the part about it for me, Bakari, when he started talking about the bad B. And I'm like. There's only a small segment of women that refer to themselves as a bad B. And when they do, I mean, unfortunately, I think there's a quote unquote, you know, you have this prototype or you have this uh, misperception of a woman because she's a bad B. You know, I mean, we use we hear Meg Thee Stallion, for example, using that terminology. 
uh, Lil Kim has used that, Nicki Minaj, those type of women who express themselves in that way, we've heard it. We don't hear Lauren Hill, for example, and I'm just using her as an example, right. you know, saying I'm a bad B, you know what I mean? And, I, and I, it just goes to show you, like, his world is limited in terms of being uh, exposed to women who don't see themselves like, like it's either you a real woman or you a bad B. And it's like, yeah, like, that's, like, that's it. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's Faraj, that's kind of where, where my mind went when I heard this, which I feel like I've been under a pop culture rock. So I'm like, what he said? <laughs> oh, um, but it's a couple of things. One aesthetic and attitude are two different things. So he kind of immediately conflated the aesthetic which he specifically said the aesthetic of a bad B, which I'm like dressing a certain way doesn't mean you're automatically in the attitude or persona of what we consider in pop culture, the bad B. That's one thing. And then the other is for me, I think, you know, we have traditionally referred to them as gender roles because these were the specific life skills taught to men. And then the specific set of life skills taught to women that, you know, pretty much kind of just leaves our trans and non-binary brothers and sisters out of the conversation mm -hmm. altogether. But mm -hmm. this really, in, for, in my opinion, boils down to the life skills. So the segment of people, <laughs> to LaDawn's point, in Cam's world, right, the women that he's been engaging with have trouble or limited culinary skills, limited listening <laughs> skills, and apparently limited skills on being able to potentially read the room. I think we can make that same observation about brother cam in this instance not being able to necessarily understand the difference in some of the word choice and i think it you know to me i'm like oh you getting into like the kevin samuels territory where you are just sort of creating this like blanket statement and degrading black women which i can't be a part of so for me you know it's unfortunate i hope that he is in the space where he's able to kind of just take a step back and i i do think that he's speaking specifically to the type of relationship that he wants to engage in relationships he wants to engage in when with till Don's point right his mother his the women in his family essentially right that he has those close relationships with but i think that the danger becomes and when you see someone that has a platform this size making these statements and a lot of them are rooted in very dangerous patriarchal culture that says mm -hmm. if you are a woman these are the only life skills that you have. You must be submissive. You must know how to cook and you must know how to shut up and let a man leave. Right. So that those are the things that he said overtly. But the implication of those same statements are very dangerous for one for women, especially. Right. We don't we're not I'm not in any way, shape or form putting him in the category of somebody that um, is violent domestically. But this is like these are the types of things that we see as the seeds for that type of negative behavior, number one. Mm. And then again, we pigeonhole people in spaces where we say, if you are, you have this genitalia, these are the only life skills that you have access to. You have that genitalia, though, never mind our intersex kinfolk, right? Like, so it just is very limited, it's super binary. And I don't know that it's very helpful in a larger context. I think if he were just having that conversation with some of his loved ones at their yeah. kitchen table. yeah. Y'all do what y'all want to do. Once we bring it into a national platform, we have to start unpacking it the way that we would hope, you know, other people would for us to, to be able to see and understand some of the nuance and what's actually being said. Yeah, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, Thread, because Janelle checked in and said, look, Cam sounds very intimidated by non-traditional progressive women. Uh, she said he deserves every flame of fire that comes his way. <laughs> Some men like to judge, but can't stand up to the same judgment. Common did this too. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and I think that this is, and I think that for, and I've seen a lot of men, particularly brothers, who felt very like, like they had to defend some level of manhood. And, and I think Ladon, that, that for a lot of men, it's scary that we're in a place where women are asserting their independence. There are, I'm not gonna say a lot, but I think some brothers are, are just really scared. They're like, I don't know how to change. I don't know how to make the shift between what I have been taught and conditioned to believe about myself and my role 
versus what is happening in my world around me, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't know how to how to quote unquote adapt to this or be you know accommodate to all of these evolving changes. I don't know how to deal with a woman who is progressive, who have more progressive views about womanhood and manhood than I do. Mm-hmm. So I feel like for for some men, they just like, well, bump it. I'm gonna just stay. I'm gonna just have this hard, fast attitude. Dig my heels in, yeah. Dig my heels. You know what I mean? Because Mm -hmm. and then if I come across any woman that doesn't fit that mold, man, I'm gonna just, just, just move her out the way. Just totally not listen to her. And I'm wondering, Ladon, as a woman, Mm -hmm. I mean, how do how do we break through that? Because men have to. We have to grow up too. And I know some guys be like, man, Faraji. Sometimes, yo, you sound like, I, yeah, because <laughs> I'm trying to understand. I'm per, I'm serious. I don't know it. I don't have all the answers. I'm trying to understand. So so how do we break through all of that, LaDon? You know, we have to be realistic. Um, we no longer live in a time where necessarily one person working can cover a whole household. You know, if you have child care costs, if your kids go to private school, Come if on. you want to live in something bigger than a shed, both people have to work. I mean, that's just the truth. So some things have to change because logically they just can't keep going the same way they've traditionally gone. Then also we have to really sort of tap into, you know, especially guys, they like to talk about what grandma did and what ma did. But do you really know your mother's story? You know, do you really know grandma's story? Do you know about what she had to put up with to stay married for 37 years? Do you know the sacrifices she may have made? Was she really happy about all the house cleaning and cooking and the, you know coming in from work and having to do another shift? You know, was she really happy about all that stuff, or was she just a good parent who kept that away from her children and and just pushed through as a lot of women do? So those are the things that I challenge men with who don't want to bend, who don't want to adjust. And then the final piece would be. Do you want a successful relationship? Do you want a happy home? Then sometimes you have to take on roles. Sometimes you have to do things that you don't necessarily want to do or think is necessarily your role. I mean, we have to open ourselves up to new definitions of relationships and mm-hmm. marriages and things like that. And that necess- our relationships don't necessarily, I can't talk, our relationships don't necessarily look like our parents and that's okay. So we got to be okay with that. We have Absolutely. to be okay with the fact that our relationships are going to be different. And mm-hmm. I think that's uncharted territory for a lot of people, Adon. I think that that's the, one of the scary elements of this new space of where we are with relationships because relationships was already, for lack of a better word, tricky to, to get the roles right, the traditional stuff right. Now we're in a space where it was like, wait a minute, I got to think about this and I got to think about that. I got to... Now I'm in a whole different space. And I always tell people, you know, we th- th- there are very few books. I'm going to say very, very few books out there to teach us about the proper relationship between a man and a woman or the proper relationships in general, whether same sex or, or, or other relationships. Like there are very few places that people can go to to learn about understanding the changes and the evolution of people in a relationship. Man. And I think that scares a lot of people. I think mm-hmm. we're kind of like winging it to, to like, and I'm sure you probably get calls and texts and emails and <laughs> we're done all the time. People are like, I don't know what the hell to do anymore. Right. I don't know what to do. Like, you know, my wife and I had this relationship, this conversation just yesterday and we were both, and I was just sharing with her, I was like, you know what? marriages and relationships long-term relationships they don't last because for some reason we don't think that the person that we met at the very beginning of the relationship will ever change Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like if you've been married (laughs) yes you know what i'm saying and i'm not talking about just like a year i'm talking about uh, some time where circumstances and Mm -hmm. money Mm -hmm. and move and children and all you got all this stuff happening that's going to change a person it is is. can i i just gotta chime in i've been like go ahead please i I am like i have a my thing maybe 30 minutes left of my first listen to bell hooks the will to change Mm. and the title the full title is the will to change men masculinity and love 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I work in, you know, as you shared on the show before, an LGBTQ community um, with a lot of folks that operate outside of the traditional gender binary, right? So just male and female, folks that are non-binary, that are queer, that are trans. And one of the things I like about this book is that Bell Hooks is talking about what a lot of masculine folks, not just men, but men and masculine people, masculine identified people, um, which can very well include straight women who, you know, we just put in the category of also just being Mm -hmm. masculine, Mm -hmm. want the closing gap with like emotional labor. And I think that that's one of the major changes and pivots that I think we're going to see and have to see in our relationships moving forward for them Mm. to survive is not only to LaDon's point and to your point, right? We, we got to have two breadwinners the way capitalism is set up, but now we also have to share some of this emotional labor. And I think that that's one Mm. of the pieces that Cam was touching on when we talk about women staying in a woman's place and cooking it, that's meaning that also is, again, what you're saying without saying is that the woman, the feminine person is who's supposed to do that emotional labor. Mm-hmm. And I think we know from the trauma and the grief and the anger, the anguish that we've experienced as a community across all the genders, right? Across the full spectrum of the black community, we got to share some of this emotional labor because all of us are in some way a sort of against the ropes. So I just, I wanted to offer that is The Will to Change, Men, Masculinity, and Love by Bell Hooks. And it's been blowing my mind about the things that we say and don't say to men, to boys. So yeah, so that's that's one of the places I feel like that's one resource that I just wanted to offer up. I love that. Bakari, I love that you brought that into the conversation because I think that, again, going back to that traditional role of Don, people think that the woman is emotional, the man is supposed to be physical, and like black men in particular, and I say this all the time, and I tell my son, don't be afraid to feel. Mm-hmm. And I love that you just brought that point up, Bakari, about sharing mm-hmm. the emotional labor. I am a, woo, I'm an emotional guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that, and I love that. And I'm not going to be, a, un- I'm unapologetic about it. I'm mm-hmm. an emotional guy. My wife be like, you're so emotional. I am, I am, I am, <laughs> you know, but you know, it's like when you're trying to break out and, and this is not on some, some political quote unquote, you know what I mean? I'm trying to be a political feminist or something along those lines, but it's just that I realized that we have done so much damage to ourselves, LaDon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because we haven't learned what true masculinity is that includes emotion. Mm -hmm. being in touch with our emotion and therefore we haven't been able to get in touch with the emotion of our partner and i know that that has led to domestic violence emotional abuse and other trauma because we haven't been liberated from the uh from these type of uh, misperceptions of what manhood should be Exactly. And and to Bakari's point, too, in a lot of if you want to consider them traditional relationships, women carry the emotional baggage of the relationship. They feel like they have to keep everybody happy. They have to keep everybody on an even keel. You know, if somebody's having a bad day, I have to fix it. And so what we're running into now is a generation of women who are saying, look, I have the same right to the freedoms that you enjoy in this relationship. I have the same rights to be happy. I have the same rights to expect you to be emotionally connected to me. You can no longer just marry me and forget that I'm there. You know, I I want a partner. I want a true partnership. And I think when we have men having these types of conversations and spaces, I think what they don't realize is a lot of the things that you desire, her cooking, her being attentive, her being soft, her come being on, there for you, come those on. things come out of being respected. Those things come out of you being a true partner. Mm. And those things come out of you carrying some of the weight. And sometimes women are just frustrated because they carry all the weight. Oh, my gosh. Yep. LaDon, you know I can talk to you forever about this stuff. <laughs> I'm serious. I can't because I'm, I'm a student first, right? So, mm-hmm. I'm. I look, I know that I... I I've been so 
my wife teaches me things. I'm listening to other women. I'm listening to Bakari today. I'm listening to you. I'm listening to what our women uh, watchers are saying. And like, I, I think that, that we all have to be open to be fed. And I think for Cam Newton, like it's, it's unfortunate. And I'm happy that he put himself out there because now he realized, hopefully, that he needs to to kind of grow up a little bit he's and not. to see. He's not. Okay, all right, fine then. The hell with him. He's gonna keep playing in his pond. He not. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, look, we got we got a lot of work to do, Ladon. So that means that I'm gonna have to keep bringing you back. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's always fun. I appreciate it, Ladon Black, author, relationship expert. Ladon, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. Thanks for having me, Faraji. Absolutely. Folks, we got to take a quick pause. When we come back, let's talk about Chris Rock and his brothers. Oh, my gosh. Tony's 